The government offers a number of incentives to encourage people to make the move to electric vehicles. The one we're interested in today is the OLEV grant. Before we get into the detail of what it is and how you can get it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We make videos like this one every week. By subscribing, you are less likely to miss any new explainers, tutorials, or review videos we might upload. Without further ado, let's take a look at the OLEV grant. As you may know, the government is trying to encourage people to switch over to low or zero emission vehicles. To drive this change, it offers incentives to help towards the cost of making that switch. These schemes are managed by the government's Office for Zero Emission Vehicles Department or OZEV department for short. That name may sound unfamiliar to you, but at the time of recording, the government OLEV department, or Office for Low Emission Vehicles, had just changed its name. So it is now known as OZEV for short. But seeing as everybody still refers to the grant as the OLEV grant at the moment, that's what we'll refer to it as in this video. Just Keep in mind, if you're watching this video many months after we made it, then you may now know it as the OZEV grant. Got that? Good. Let's get stuck in. There are two main schemes. Firstly, the plug-in car grant. This offers money towards the purchase of an eligible vehicle, such as a full electric car. The second is the Electric Vehicle Home Charge Scheme, or EVHS. This is more commonly known as the OLEV grant and, at the time of recording, contributes up to £350 towards the cost of a home car charger installation. This is the scheme we're talking about today. So, when I talk about the OLEV grant, this is what I am referring to the grant contribution towards your home car charger installation. Although, keep in mind, the government's OLEV department could change the value of the grant at any time. The contribution used to be £500, but this was lowered to £350 in 2020, so it's not impossible the value could change again. It's important to know you must meet the government's requirements in order to claim the grant in the first place. So, let's run through them. Firstly, vehicle ownership. You can claim the grant if you are one of the following. You are the registered keeper of a new or second-hand eligible electric vehicle. You can claim a second grant if you own two eligible electric vehicles, but you must have both vehicles at the same time. You can claim if you are assigned an eligible company vehicle for at least six months, or if you lease an eligible vehicle for at least six months. You can also claim if you're leasing an eligible vehicle through a salary sacrifice scheme, or if you are named by your employer as the primary user of an eligible vehicle for at least six months. You can also claim if you have an eligible vehicle on order. Now, you will need to prove to your installer, such as Smart Home Charge, that you're the registered keeper or that the vehicle is on order. Remember, this information could change, so be sure to check our website in future. We will also link to the OLEV evidence guide on our website in the description down below. Secondly, you must have an approved electric car or plug-in hybrid vehicle. To claim the grant, you must have purchased or have on order a vehicle that is on the OLEV, now OZEV, list of approved vehicles. We will include a link to that page in the description below if you want to have a look. The main parameter that affects whether a vehicle makes it onto this approved list or not is how much CO2 it emits. You can find more details on this on the government's website, which we will also link to below. Obviously, a zero emissions vehicle, such as a fully electric car, should be fine, but don't assume it is approved. And keep in mind that plug-in hybrids can be hit or miss. 
For example, some plug-in hybrids have more than one engine size to choose from, so it's possible one model from the range will be eligible and another is not. That's just a simple example, but it is something to be careful of. In addition, we also understand it is up to the vehicle manufacturer to apply to the government for its vehicles to be added to the approved vehicle list. So there may even be cases where a vehicle should be eligible, but the vehicle manufacturer has not asked for it to be added to the eligible vehicle list. In other words, if there's more than one variant of your vehicle available, then it's worth double checking your version is actually eligible. Don't assume it is approved just because it is a plug-in hybrid or even fully electric. The Porsche Panamera is a good example of just this. Only the SE hybrid version of the Panamera is currently eligible for the Home Charger grant. Despite there being six, plug-in hybrid versions of the Porsche Panamera. So it's definitely worth checking, and if you're not sure, then it may be worth contacting the government OZEV department first. Thirdly, you must be resident at the property. In other words, you must live at the property where you want the installation. And the government will check this against the vehicle registration details. So the address for installation must match the address for where the vehicle is registered. If the link between the property and yourself is not clear, the government may also ask for extra evidence to prove this, such as a utility bill. If you don't own the property or you live in a block of flats, then you will need a written letter from the landlord or managing agent giving permission for the installation to go ahead. Another requirement is you must have dedicated private off-street parking. So your property must have designated private off-street parking. In most cases, if your off-street parking is attached to your property, then it is quite simple to prove that through photo evidence. However, your off-street parking can actually be separate from your property so long as you can prove it is your legal entitlement to park your vehicle there. If that's the case, you will likely need to provide land registry title deeds, often known as the red line plan. The government also requires that the vehicle must be able to be charged safely. It isn't much more specific than that, unfortunately, but in our experience, a trailing cable crossing a footpath can pose issues for the grant application. So that's something to be aware of. You must also be able to access that parking space at all times. We will require photo evidence of your private off-street parking, which you will submit to us as part of your online site survey anyway. So that's usually quite a simple part of the process. You must also use an authorized installer. So to claim the grant, you will also need to use an OLEV authorized installer, such as Smart Home Charge. An approved installer will help with your grant application, such as gathering the relevant evidence from you to submit to the government. Finally, you also need to pick a charge point that is smart and OLEV approved. We make it clear on our website which products are eligible for the grant and at the time of recording, the Tesla wall connector is the only charger on our website which is not eligible for the grant. So when do you get the grant? The grant discount is given up front by the authorized installer. In other words, you won't need to wait for a reimbursement. As your installer, we will check a few details up front, such as your vehicle make and model, and your private off-street parking photo. Now, keep in mind, this is a basic check, and even though your quote may include the government grant discount, it does not automatically mean you have been approved. As mentioned earlier, it's not until the month after installation that we submit your application to the government. Getting a response can take anything from three months upwards to approve or reject a claim. Keep in mind, it is not us, the installer, who will approve or reject your grant application, nor does it mean you are approved once we submit the application to the government. 
or even after your installation is complete. So you could still be liable for the value of the grant if the government rejects your application, or it might mean additional evidence is required to be submitted. What is our responsibility to you as installers? Well, as your authorized installer, we will claim the grant on your behalf. This means you receive the grant discount up front if we think you're eligible, so you aren't out of pocket. We also have a responsibility to check you meet the qualifying criteria for the government grant. This might mean we call you or email you to clarify certain information. Please don't be alarmed or offended. We always think it's better to get the right information before your application is submitted rather than be sloppy, assume your information is correct, submit it to the government and then find the government has actually rejected your claim. That doesn't benefit anybody. We also make sure you understand the requirements for the grant and it's our responsibility to inform you if we think you do not meet the criteria. However, it is also your responsibility as a customer to ensure you meet the requirements for the grant as well. This is a team effort and installers are relying on you to provide correct and accurate information. It sounds silly, but something as simple as giving us your nickname instead of your full name could trip us up and cause problems with the grant application later on down the line. So please be honest at every stage of the application application and installation process. Help us help you. When we get you to sign the relevant application forms for the grant, you are declaring that all the information you've submitted was correct and valid. So please make sure it is. It's also your responsibility to inform us if your circumstances change before the day of installation, such as if your vehicle details change or anything else that may affect your application. It could result in a rejected claim otherwise, or if the government finds you had provided incorrect information, then it may seek to claim the funding back from you, and nobody wants that. So it pays to be upfront and honest. When it comes to the government handing out money, the devil is very much in the detail and the government can be very strict with the grant application. Again, help us help you. I hope this has been helpful in explaining how the grant works. It may seem daunting or a lot of work. I promise it sounds worse than it is. Our in-house grant team is on hand to ensure your application process is a smooth one and to make sure we have all the right details from you. We won't submit an application we aren't happy with. And if we don't think you are eligible, we will be honest and tell you to save you the hassle later down the line. If you have any questions about the grant, feel free to get in touch with our customer service team who will help you where they can. If you found this video helpful, give it a like down below and click that subscribe button to see more videos just like this one. Otherwise, see you next time.